So we're back at the LEC, it's Saturday. I'm not convinced we're going to do a great deal of uh, vlogging today, uh, but I just thought I'd let you know here. And I've got visitors, well not visitors, I've got support team here today. We've got Claire, we've got Darcy May. So the guys are here today with me. So we'll see how much vlogging we get done, but we're here anyway and looking forward to it. So it's Saturday, it's just before the show opens. You can see there are queues there at the door. I think the show is going to open any time. This is probably going to be one of the busiest days of the show. So we'll see what happens as people start charging through. You can see it's all calm, all the exhibitors are ready and waiting. Here we go. There you go, look. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Caravan and Motorhome show opening. So they're just about to start a demonstration of the Opus. Um, this is the Opus inflatable camp. The idea behind it, obviously, it is just a, a, a trailer, quite a rugged kind of off-road style trailer. A fully functioning kitchen, a luxurious seating area, and even a built-in heater for keeping you warm during those cooler months. This is all surrounded by over two metres of headroom. This really gives you an amazing camping So the standard Opus is £21,995, there's optional extras to show pack. obviously you're trying to have a quick look inside, it still needs to be set up, but you've got kitchen area. In fact, I tell you what, let's wander over and we'll show you one that's already been set up. If we wander over this way can also convert into another double bed. So here's one you can put the sun canopy on, that sort of thing, so that'll give you extra outdoor space. And we're going to move over here. Uh, again, this is the standard. So here's the standard laid out. Uh, it's actually quite roomy and airy. In fact, it's really quite surprising how nice it is. Um, we've got a double bed here. Uh, nice size double bed, sink, cooking, fridge. Uh, I'm going to go about it in the back here and seating area. Uh, that's actually quite nice, isn't it? So what do you reckon, Darcy, mate? No, 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 but I think if you were kind of maybe live somewhere else and we're doing off-roading and things like that, I think this would be ideal. I think you'd be surprised how warm it would be inside. Claire's saying she'd freeze, but I think with the proper heat and a proper setup, you'd probably be fine. So that is the Opus All Road. So another thing that's becoming a little bit more popular are these GoPods, um, the micro caravans. Uh, very lightweight, very small, um, quite compact really. But you know what, for those kind of weekends away, oh, you've got to watch that. As you gathered, I probably just banged my head. Um, so you've got a pop-up roof, um, you've got your sleeping area, table area here, small fridge, so yeah, you've got a small fridge there. So you've got gas hob, sink, cupboards, microwave. In fact, you've got a microwave in there. I guess kind of wardrobe area. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that kind of strikes me, I guess, about these micro campers, 
or the micro pods, the go pods, is actually they seem to be reasonably well put together. Uh, they certainly do seem solid, well constructed. Um, obviously, range of different interiors, but really very quite small and compact. I guess you've got your uh, yeah external electric on there, so I guess the idea is you probably put a pop up tent. That sort of thing on the back. Yeah, with a front locker. Uh, I'm guessing you've probably got gas bottle and that sort of thing in there. So yeah, the GoPod Tora. Oh, yeah. Sean, right. you're, you're good so I'm just in a collapse zone, and we'd had some down. small issues um, uh, with the filler nozzle and the fact that when I was putting it on, this piece would be pulling through. So I've just been chatting to guys, and naturally, what I would do is put it on like that, pull it over, stretch it, and pull it tight. Um, but there's another way you can potentially do it, and it's, it was that kind of stretching it over where it might have pulled it through. But different way of trying it. So focus on the tap, there, can you see the tap? So basically, drop the loop over first, pull it up, and then tighten it up. So just a different way, different way of trying it. Give it a go, see what you think. So something else that's becoming uh, more popular certainly nowadays and what you see more at the shows are the um, sports camper. Uh, this is the Mink camper, um, alternative, I guess, to a camper van. So quite funky in the style, very, very lightweight, um, very sort of reasonable off-road, that sort of stuff. Obviously just trying to look around while other people are looking at it. So you've got your kind of kitchen area at the back here, small stove, fridge compartment, storage again, all your different pots, pans, that sort of stuff. You've got a really nice sort of work area here to be able to work from. And it all shuts down, locks up nice and gives a real Kind of nice oh, and I've just noticed you've got a flexible solar panel on here as well. So flexible solar panel. Bring that back up again. So quite easy on gas struts. And then we'll take a wander around, have a look inside. Now I do like that, that's a nice little feature. Cup holders. Quite your mud guards. So inside. So again, nice little shelf area. It's actually nice, comfy, small storage spaces. USB blown air, so it's got heating systems and things as well. So 240 volt electric cook up, so you're gonna have 240 volts. You've got a six by set, uh, sorry, six foot seven by four foot six bed, uh, memory foam mattress, underbed heating, so you've got blown air heating all the way around. Uh, and Stargaze Skylight, so there's a skylight in the top there. So you can see the skylight over there. And basically starting price of £19,995. So that is the Mink Campus. Oh, there's an awning as well, so just taking a look up here. You can see there's an awning freestanding, so you can use the awning either at the side or certainly in the back, so you can have it over your cooking area, zipped in ground sheet, uh, gives you extra space. So here's a spec just to give you the spec. So gross weight of 750 kilograms, net weight 520 kilograms, overall length 4.116 millimeters. That's yeah, 4.116 meters. Um, Cabin length 2.81 metres, overall height 1.829 metres, overall width 2.080 metres, cabin width 1.50 metres, road clearance 300 millimetres, so reasonably off-roadable, uh, wheels 17 by 8.5 by 1.2s, tyres 225s, 55R17s, tongue height 450 millimetres, tongue weight 75 kilos. Um, so you've got lights, USB, Skylight, underbed heating, climate control, Alco chassis. So there we are, hope you guys have found that useful. Just one more bit to add in. Um, basically, you can stick a bike rack on the front as well. So if we go around the front here. So 
you've got room to mount a bike rack on there so bike rack ready you can drop a bike rack on there so you can get a couple of bikes in there as well looking at this you've got the diesel tank 12 litre diesel tank so is that for, for the diesel heater i'm guessing um so yeah all in all quite a funky little camper oh, so we've just been wandering around and here we are we've come across the mcneils on wheels <laughs> There they are, busy at working with their new range of caravan gifts for the UK. If you've not followed their channel before, I'll uh, put a link down below. These guys started off by setting up and becoming kind of caravan wardens, campsite wardens, That's that correct. sort of stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, and following their adventures from buying a caravan, from being real newbies to kind of learning things the hard way, um, from towing realizing you're illegal to tow while, should we say yes, that but yes. you know we've all been there but it's simple things simple things like that and then the renovation of the caravan that these guys bought and how they went through it the trials the tribulations it was only supposed to take you how long uh two weeks i budgeted two weeks budgeted and it ended up being three months yeah. three months so yeah. we watched it start to finish um but they're now doing a whole range of kind of caravan memoirs and caravan camping bits that sort of stuff so we'll put a link down below what are you laughing at? What's she laughing at? I oh. Can't tell you. oh, sorry. <laughs> Claire's, Claire's reading some of the cards. So, yeah, take a look on the website, that sort of stuff. But, yeah, you check these guys out. We've really enjoyed following them. We'll see you soon. They can't find an electric hookup. Well, it's about half past 11. It's on the Saturday. Um, you saw what the show was like before it opened. Uh, it's now opened. And it is busy. Um, from what I understand, there's 22,000 plus visitors expected today. Um, so it should be a good turnout. <sighs> Everybody seems happy. People seem to be spending. People seem to be wanting to buy. Um, talking to two or three of the traders and the dealers. They've all had uh, a good show so far. They've, uh, they've hit orders, they've hit targets. So things are quite positive out there, despite what the media are saying. Okay, not necessarily our bag, but we're now in that area of kind of the extreme motorhomes or the ultra luxury motorhomes. Um, you know, they really do look impressive. Probably can't get in them. Uh, well, you've got a queue to get in them. Some of them's appointment only, that sort of stuff. I mean, there's one here. I mean, in all essence, this is a truck. Um, you know, this has got to be built on a truck chassis obviously extends out um, so let's have a quick run around yeah. I mean these are trucks um, you know there's no doubt in it these are certainly not, it's not one of those, it's a truck. Um, yeah, I suppose the reality is a lot of the caravan and motorhome club sites wouldn't let you on. Uh, they'd probably be quite big. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, that is £406,000, £283. And you can guarantee there's going to be extras on that. So you're going to be £420,000 plus um, just to kind of get it on the road. But yeah, very, very nice. Very, very nice vehicles. Some more here, look. There's a little cheaper, that one's 182,700. Ah, okay, the big one. The big one that is a big truck. Yeah. There's the price. Did it take fit? Six hundred and sixty-five thousand three hundred and fifty-three pounds. That's six hundred and sixty-six thousand pounds by the time you got it on the road. Nice vehicle, ultra luxury. If you've got the money, great. And I guess the sort of people that would be buying these sorts of things um, are the people that can afford to, and that we take it to Ascot for the weekend uh, and all that sort of stuff. I can't believe they would drive that down to Monte Carlo. Uh, if they took it down to Monte Carlo, they'd have somebody with it. Or the, sorry, they'd have somebody drive it there for them. But yeah, we've gone to that kind of extreme. Far beyond our budget, uh, far beyond all of our budgets, I'm guessing. Um, it is really for the elite. But if we could get inside, we could probably show you inside. But 
you know you know it's going to be luxury you know everything's going to be well beat you'd expect it to be for that sort of price but i don't know in life would i spend that sort of money on a motorhome i don't think so um i'd probably prefer to spend it on several motorhomes or property or that sort of thing so just outside the Axi stand, exhibition stand, as you know, we use the Axi card and the Axi app very, very successfully uh, throughout our trip to France. So I highly recommend it. Membership's not expensive. Um, you've got the app, you've got the book. Uh, we would just travel, pick somewhere we wanted to go, click on the Axi app, select where we wanted to, give them a call, get a pitch, turn up, job done. So me and Darcy May are racing on the scale electric. I don't know which one I am, or I'm the, I'm the, the one at the top here. Darcy May's flying ahead. How people try to sit behind us? Oh, I hit something. <laughs> Darcy May's flying ahead. I think I've, I think, yeah, I'm tipped over on the side there, dragging the caravan round. And Darcy May's caught up the army. Oh, and it's, it's mayhem, it's chaos, it's chaos. Oh my goodness me, what are we doing? I don't know where I am. I'm there. Here we go. Yeah. I think somebody needs some uh, practice in hitching techniques. It's late for the but oh, let me have a look. Right, that's it, let me have a look. Let that's it, it's finished, let's see who's won. Put the controls Put down. down. Beat my 8.5. Right, who was driving the red car? Darcy May. That was so fast. 8.6, you were... Wow! 8.6. <laughs> One second off the leaderboard. So Darcy mate beat her daddy. Thank you very much for that. Bit of chaos and carnage. So we're just on the camping and caravanning club uh, stand there, kind of demonstration stand. There's some cooking bits on there. And uh, the Roman Radfords are over there. Everybody's coming and saying hi to your mum and dad. Oh, thank you. How are we doing? Nice to meet you. Welcome. All right. Good. Are you enjoying the show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I forget what your name is. My name's George. Yeah. There we go. That's George. You see, this is Darcy May. Hello. Shake his hand. See, everybody's everybody's standing, having the photograph taken with a mum and dad. Go on, you stand next to him. Let's get your photo. Two YouTube kids. Nice one. Thank you, George. Right. Thanks. So I've just come across the Outdoor Revolution electric grill plate. As you guys know, we've got the Camper XL, um, but this just seems like a little bit better, I must admit. Um, it seems a lot more solid, um, better put together. Uh, it's gonna work in exactly the same way, but I don't know um, those guys that are using the tap and yak in the similar things out there. A um, little bit more difficult, not bad, but a little bit more difficult to clean up. Um, certainly the drip tray is a little more difficult. I just, I don't know, there's something about this. I quite like the look of it. I quite like the feel of it. Um, Does it just come from what I understand and what I've been told, apart from the electrical bit here, um, apart from that bit, everything else is totally submersible in water. So you can literally just put it in, uh, in the sink, wash it down, that sort of stuff. So. I think what we'll do, they don't have them available for sale here, but I think what we'll do is we'll get one bought. We've entered a competition uh, to win one. The likelihood of us winning one is very slim, but what we'll do is we'll get one bought, we'll take it out, we'll go do a review and bring you a vlog on it. Well, it's just before three o'clock on the Saturday. Um, busy show still, as you can see, still plenty of people around, plenty of activity. And lots going on. Plenty of people spending. <laughs> Pl as Claire says, plenty of people spending. I mean, yeah, there seems to be lots of people buying caravans, lots of people buying accessories. Um, there's certainly deals being done when you look around and you look at the uh, the salesmen's tables, that sort of thing. So we're just over here at Lock and Level. We've come by, as you guys know, we've got the twin axle version there. Obviously, it's a single axle, single axle, axle version as well. Um, I'd run out of dust caps, um, so I've come and asked really, really nicely and been given a spare pair of dust caps. But yeah, just to emphasise, we use the lock and level. We did have one issue, and I will admit we did have one issue where it was leaking, but got in touch with these guys. One of the sides was leaking, got in touch with these guys, sent it back, they repaired it, they turned it round in under a week. So service and support has been great. 
We've probably used it, how many times do you reckon we've used it? Half a dozen times. It's always in the van. Uh, it's really useful. So yeah, I can recommend Lock and Level. So I'm just going to leave the girls here, they're sat watching uh, cooking demonstrations at the Camping and Caravanning Club, these cooking demonstrations have basically been around pizzas, so normal pizzas, sweet pizzas and how to cook pizzas on a pizza stone, so I'll leave them to it while I wander further around the show. So while I leave Claire and Darcy May watching the uh, food prep demonstrations or the cooking demonstrations, I'm just walking back around the show. I've come across these little freedom caravans uh, for bread print in West Yorkshire. Again, small, lightweight caravans. All like the sort of GRP moulded, that sort of stuff. Free birth, um, only 680 kilograms, so pretty much be able to tow with any car uh, as long as the manufacturer says you can tow. You can fit a tow bar, so that one's 15,295, so they're both 15,295. What I'll do once these kids are out of the way, I'll uh, go on, guys. You go first, it's all right, I don't mind waiting. So I'll just wait for these guys to have a look and then we'll go in. So we'll take a walk inside. Um, small dinette at the far right hand side, and then dining area. Um, dinette up here, with a little table. So, yeah, you know, it's not bad, it's compact. Um, storage at the top. I'm guessing this turns into a double bed. You've got your little Thetford up in there. Like that. Then you've got a two ring hob here. Sink. Um, small overhead cupboards. I'm guessing this little sort of diner area turns into another bed as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we've got the fridge here. Sockets down there, USB charging. Um, I'm guessing this is a wardrobe. So if you're looking for a small camper or a small caravan to tow, then I guess this could be a solution for you. I suspect if you want to kind of increase the space, um, although there isn't an awning rail, or is there an awning rail there? No, there is an awning rail there. Um, so it's got an awning rail on. So you can um, stick an awning rail, an awning rail. You can stick an awning on there to increase the, uh, the living space. Front locker, I'm guessing with gas storage, although they've got a spare wheel in there, uh, gas locker in there, that sort of stuff. So yeah, the little Freedom three berth caravans. So just walking back, and I'm walking past the Dometic, just having a quick look at the awnings, and I've just noticed this residence air all season uh, full awning full performance uh, this is a big awning um, very very big awning looks very much like your traditional awning um, but is in fact an air awning i do like the size of this awning but i can only imagine it must be a big bag to carry around um, quite a weight to pull through the awning rail but just kind of taking a look at it very very big you've got window panels with their own kind of blackout shutter bits you can drop it down obviously these are the window panels shut down um so that is a big one you're going to need a big caravan i mean it needs a full on if you look even on the frame they've got it kind of curves all the way over so i don't know whether i don't know you know with this one because obviously normally the flaps go along and with the traditional sized fold awnings you kind of need to get the right size for your van but with the air awnings obviously that was taken away but I don't know with this one maybe this is size specifically with bag ah oh, it is look different sizes you've got size 13 size 14 16 15 17 and 18 so you would get one of these very much like the old pearl awning size this is a full awning then to fit the caravan based on your caravan so they've obviously got the biggest one that they've got here so you've got front doors you've got side exits panels uh, that sort of stuff so yeah i quite like the look of that um leave it to you to decide So I'm just walking back towards Claire and Darcy May and I don't know, it struck me, I'm guessing that 
probably since uh, the shelves have come back since the pandemic. I'm just wondering if there is many kind of accessory stores or accessory stalls. You know, people just selling those basic um, accessory bit, your toilet fluids, your reel for your um, cable, um, you know, your aqua, aqua, aqua roll, waste master, um, pegs, you know, all those sorts of stuff. Um, maybe they're a bit more spread out this year or maybe it's just me, but I don't seem to feel like there are as many sort of accessory stalls. Who knows? So it's just gone six o'clock, the show's now closed, uh, and this is end of our day two. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a kind of mishmash of a vlog with bits of this and bits of that, but I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please give us a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to leave comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. I know I say that all the time now, don't I? Um, so yeah, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from... Bye. See you guys, take care.